Welcome to Small Business University Online, powered by Small Business Expo, America's biggest business trade show and conference. We want to extend a very special thank you to AT&T Business for supporting small business and being our presenting sponsor. Please be sure to check out our complete webinar schedule and all on-demand recordings from previous webinars on smallbusinessuniversity.online. All of our webinars are free and full of incredible information to help you grow your business. This webinar is being recorded and will be made available within 24 hours on smallbusinessuniversity.online. At this time, we are turning the public chat feature off for the presentation. We will reopen the public chat window closer to the end so that you can post your questions for our presenter to answer during the open Q&A portion. And now, I'm very excited to introduce today's webinar. Please, take it away. Well, hello. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. My name is Kevin L. Jackson, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer for SourceConnect. SourceConnect is a blockchain-enabled B2B marketplace, and we are excited to sponsor today's webinar entitled, Can Your Company Take Bitcoin? Now, while Bitcoin refers specifically to just one type of digital currency, there are actually many others. In fact, Bitcoin digital currency represent just one use case for blockchain, a distributed ledger technology that has many uses. Joining me on today's panel are Taylor Wallace, Director of Marketing with Total Network Services, and Jermaine Cohen, Director of Esports with TNS. So to get things started, Jermaine, can you give us a short tutorial on blockchain? Absolutely, Kevin. I'd be glad to. <laughs> so I, I like to get this thing started off uh, real fast. And first and foremost, uh, by posing this as a question, right? So first of all, you know, do you value ownership? That's the question I like to ask. And, and do you want to have quick and highly secure access to your own resource? And, and I'm talking about securities, assets, uh, insurance, uh, records, money, all of these things. The common factor uh, between all of us is that we all want transparency in our everyday transactions uh, in the world that we live in, even when we're not willing to give it. Uh, all of this can be accomplished through uh, blockchain technology. In fact, one of the greatest things blockchain has given us is tokenization. Let me break this down a little further. So. Tokenization means that an asset, which can be highly complex, um, can be broken down and or fractionalized, right? We can go even a little bit deeper than that. I consult for a lending company called Add Zero Funding, right? This year, I've seen at least a couple of decks to get funding for these massive sports complexes. Now, we all know that obviously these guys are going out to angel investors and all types of lenders. But just imagine if instead they chose to fat the path of tokenization. Now, what does this mean? This means that they go out and they you can take a, the actual facility itself and fractionalize it by square foot. It's, it's a brilliant concept. I mean, there's just so many avenues when it comes to blockchain and tokenization. And I'm so excited to talk about it. I don't want to get ahead of myself. So. Let's move on to the next slide. <clears throat> so what does blockchain provide? Trust, accountability, and predictability. Saying A and doing A versus saying A but doing B. We all want to trust the institutions that we work with to do the right things and even the people around us. But how do we ensure that these things happen? Well, through blockchain technology, we can actually rebuild this trust that we're looking for out of our partners and out of the businesses that we work with from day to day. <clears throat> if you're reading this slide, I like to point this out. You're likely an early adopter. 
right? So we're all ready for this next move in technology, which is how is it going to play out with you and your business? You know, I have the definition of blockchain right here in front of me. Um, however, I kind of want to give the ladies to, uh, you know, when you think of blockchain, you think of just that, a block with a bunch of chains. And I like to explain it this way because it's really just a ledger, which you can say uh, an Excel spreadsheet or something like that, linked to a plethora of other blocks. And what that does is it provides security because every block is actually stamped with a timestamp to for verification purposes, right? So when we're using this blockchain technology, it provides a really secure path for us to make everyday transactions, whether it be money, whether it be records, whether it be ticketing, et cetera. There's so much use of you. I can kind of go down this list a little bit from payments, um, ticketing. Guys, ticketing is a, ticket scalping is a $15 billion business. Scalping alone, blockchain technology can actually repair this problem just by tokenizing the tickets. That way we can trace it back to um, the original uh, purchase destination. Food. Imagine if you want to trace back your organic apples. From the packaging, you'll be able to see exactly where that per, per specific product actually traces back to. You guys remember the romaine lettuce debacle that we just had this year where they had to pull all the lettuce off the shelves. And while that didn't bother me so much, <laughs> my wife is pretty upset about not getting lettuce, but these are the problems that blockchain technology can definitely solve. Everything from smart contracts, and these are synonymous with a lot of other of the items that you see on this list. A lot often you can't have one without the other. Non-fungible tokens, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, distributed cloud storage, identity authentication, uh, notary systems, IoT systems, real estate, healthcare, autonomous vehicles, voting, um, even airlines. Uh, there's a company out right now called Trustedbit who actually insures vouchers after cancellation. They partner with several airlines. It's actually a pretty incredible technology. It's all in the blockchain. If you're like me, you're, you're likely everyone here is frequent flyers, and you dealt with the frustration of trying to get your voucher back. Well, guess what? Blockchain technology actually is a fix for that type of problem. Look a little bit further. So smart contracts. You know, smart contracts automate tasks for businesses, um, trimming time and hours, and it even also, you know, costs, of, of course, uh, that you had to spend on intermediaries during your regular business uh, um, organization, banks, escrow accounts, uh, some legal services. Through these types of programs, or con smart contracts, rather, we're able to uh, become more efficient as businesses and, and scaling. Um, real estate tokenization. I, I purposely added the St. Regis Hotel on here because these guys actually tokenized their property several years ago. It was actually a success. Uh, you can actually read about it. I want to say they had 18 million in games, but these are the type of stories that we'll continue to see through the introduction of blockchain technology. Identity authentication, uh, South Korea, they now have 1 million South Koreans now uh, using blockchain for their driver's licenses. It's another good way to use the technology that I believe will <laughs> just, it'll add so much value to us from a day-to-day -day standpoint, especially when it comes to voting and all the other things we have to do day-to-day. Uh, -day. And then lastly, the non-fungible token, which I know everyone has been hearing about uh, the last couple of days. Is there's a lot of buzz around it. And just to kind of give you a brief on what a non-fungible token is, it's just a digital collector, right? So it, it can't be necessarily fraction, fractionized, but um, it's something that can, it's an asset that can hold value, which could be subjective if it's art or something like that. But it, the, the power behind it is being able to collect royalties off of something that is minted and uh, stays in one place. So let's look at crypto versus digital currency. 
Now, if you see my slide here, you probably, you're probably saying to yourself, this guy's not biased at all <laughs> between crypto and fiat. But the, the reality is, is, to me, it's all about what makes sense. Um, from a crypto and digital currency standpoint, in my business every day, um, you know, as Kevin mentioned, uh, I work on the esports side for TNS, and we run these these tournaments, and it's pretty difficult to pay because I have guys who play out of Canada and all around the world. And <laughs> what happened was, I sent a PayPal, and the fees were over two hundred dollars. And I said, hey, let's try to figure out how to do this on the blockchain. So now I do a lot of my transactions on the blockchain through cryptocurrency and other digital currencies uh, like Ethereum and the USD coin, which is backed by the US dollar if you're not aware of that. So there are pros and cons to uh, fiat versus crypto. Um, I, I like to point out the de decentralization aspect of it all because that's that transparency side that I believe that we all want to grab onto and understand about what's going on with the blockchain and how we can have more control over our, our finances, our lives, uh, et cetera. So here's what the problem has been when it comes, when it comes to cryptocurrency. Um, you know, so there's a public key and a private key. You hold your public key. This is how you uh, are able to receive payment. If someone wants to send me, you know, five thousand dollars Ethereum, just go, I'll send you my address right now. <laughs> but the reality is, is there's like a thirty to fifty alphanumeric address that I have to send to them, and then they plug it in and send it over. Well, this can be problematic, right? Like, who wants to keep up with all these numbers, and and you know, you just never know. And over time, people have actually lost their keys and lost out on money. There's, I'm sure, a plethora of stories out there right now about it. Well, with the TNS digital name, it's an over-the-top solution where you can actually house all of your uh, blockchain keys under one umbrella. And it looks something like this. So just imagine in this world where, <laughs> you know, you want to, you go to the store, and you want to buy, you know, your groceries, whatever. You have this digital, um, this digital book, this digital address book, where you can actually choose how you want to pay with stuff through one particular application. You can list your um, records on there. You'll have your driver's license. There's just so many applications, and it's all under one particular umbrella. That is the actual. Um, that is the plan, right? That's what we foresee with what we're doing with digital names and how we'll actually change the game for digital currency and, and, and uh, excuse me, uh, just blockchain in general. I like to point out this slide also. Um, this is Mark Cuban predicts Dow's coin $1. Um, this is just showing everyone that people are using this technology right now. Um, the Mavs have been taking BitPay um, for some time now. Um, they're going to do Dow's coin as well. Um, my nonprofit, Project Vet, we actually have a partnership with the Dallas Mavericks G League team, um, and where we'll be working with them also um, to include some of our initiatives to promote, um, you know, digital currency and crypto and the whole blockchain. And I kind of want to round it out to end with, I don't know, 15 minutes almost, you know, how your business can participate. Um, you know, TNS does have an affiliate program um, for our, our technology, right? And what it does is it, it allows your business unit, whoever you are, to actually um, join us in promoting uh, the sale of digital names and actually being rewarded. Um, so this is, you know, kind of a simple breakdown of how it looks, but we have an admin affiliate, master affiliate, that it goes down to subs. So whether you're an influencer, an actual company, uh, and or a person, you can always reach out to us and we'll find a way to, 
to, to have you involved uh, from a, a blockchain standpoint. But I, I wanted to kind of end on that note and pass it over to uh, Taylor if we have any questions and or if I missed anything. I hope you guys enjoy uh, that presentation. And uh, we're excited about what we're doing. And Taylor, the, I'll pass the ball to you. Yeah. So uh, yeah, thank you very much, Jermaine. So so tell as you uh, as you take the the baton, so to speak. I mean, uh, this is amazing how businesses are using this digital currency. What are some of the more important business scenarios? I know we have a lot of business owners and executives in our audience. So what are those business scenarios? Mm. How, you know, how do you actually get into this stuff? So let me just zoom out a little bit before I get into that answer. Maybe in the Bitcoin world, we kind of get a bad rep. The people who are into Bitcoin, a lot of people go, yeah, it's just funny money. I don't know. Maybe it's here one day, gone the next. I don't know. Let me just first present you with this. Bitcoin is highlighting to us that regardless of what solution comes in its place, there is a problem. And the problem is, regardless of whatever solves the problem, the problem, there's a few different things. One of them is people are seeing that their, their store of value in their fiat currency is, is going up. So if we were to look at in 2009 when Bitcoin started, um, and we're fast forward to today, the average um, inflation rate of that dollar has gone up 23% about. So the same thing that was worth a dollar in 2009 when Bitcoin started is now worth a dollar 23. That's a lot. And that's that's a problem. The other problem that we're experiencing right now is that we're also in an increasingly global economy. And so previously, um, head, gold has been a, a great hedge for for inflation. There's a bunch of other um, tools that have been used to combat this inflation. Um, but Bitcoin has uniquely been able to address a problem. Um, and the problem is being able to be an anti-inflationary asset and also be something that's um, across uh, transactions across the world so that it is secure and there's an immutable record of what has happened. So regardless of what you think Bitcoin will do, there is that problem. The other problem that we're seeing right now, and just to piggyback off of what Jermaine was saying, is, is the internet's version of ownership and right now we're seeing a huge explosion in nfts non-fungible tokens which just essentially means you're taking some sort of digital asset and you're making it unique so that it's a one of one or maybe a one of ten right now the the, the digital age or the internet's version of ownership has really diluted what it means to own something the for example um, spotify has found success because they found a way to monetize the fact that um, you know, they found a way to pay artists, even though their songs just kind of go out there into the into the ether, into the internet, you know, ether. Um, and they found a way to monetize that. But what NFTs are doing are finding a new way to monetize digital assets, and in and so there there are those problems, regardless of what we believe about NFTs, what we believe about Bitcoin. So that's something to contend with. And what we're seeing the success of these things is a response to that. The other thing that people um, are are experiencing is um, that they want to be in control of what happens with their 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 money um, right now I think it's no coincidence that in the same span of time we have um, trillions of dollars um, that have been uh, pumped into the global economy we have Bitcoin having such success now of course there's a number of different reasons for that but I think it's something to point out um, so going back to your to your question, um, Kevin, I mean, let's look at a, a company like MasterCard. Uh, MasterCard just last month, I think this is really notable. MasterCard just last month released a statement in February, um, and they said that they will now be uh, supporting select cryptocurrency work. Um, and the reason for this was really interesting, and I'll just read directly from what they said. They said, our philosophy on cryptocurrencies is straightforward. It's about choice. MasterCard isn't here to recommend you start using cryptocurrencies, but we are here to enable customers, merchants, and businesses to move digital value 
traditional or crypto, however they want. By the way, that's MasterCard and Visa have now said that they're going to do this. Um, but I think that's really interesting. And, and they, they say, hey, we're not pushing you to use this, but it is about choice. So what they're recognizing, a huge business like MasterCard is realizing that people, there is this problem um, and that people want to have a say in how their store of value is is managed, whether that be their, their, you know, their currency or their, their, their assets of any kind. Um, so for, for businesses, I mean, an another fun story we a lot of us saw, uh, Tesla bought, um, I think they, they announced they bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. I think that's the number. And, uh, in just a few months of owning that Bitcoin, they made more money than they did, uh, the entire year selling their cars. Um, which is really interesting. So I think I think for for businesses that what they stand to gain is to participate in um, a solution to the problem that we're seeing right now um, and to give their customers the ability to to engage with them in that way. And hey, uh, it seems to benefit both. I mean, if you have uh, your 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 customers who are uh, storing their value in something that's increasingly going up, way faster than fiat is, then they're going to have more money to spend. And if you want them to spend that with you, I mean, that's only going to be a good thing. And then if you own that asset now and it continues to go up, um, then then that's a great thing. Of course, it is. it, it can be quite volatile. Um, we don't see a very good use case for Bitcoin specifically being a, a, a currency and replacing, you know, the, the you know, uh, government backed uh, currency but it is an experiment and it's going very well so far and the problem will not go away until something solves it and right now it is the, the leader in solving it uh, major companies that are using um bitcoin right now microsoft uh, overstock.com home depot is accepting it starbucks uh, whole foods newegg lolly uh, th there's a bunch of different companies that now that are saying you know uh, and these are legitimate successful companies none of these are anything to to be laughed at, um, who know how to manage their assets well and build global, you know, businesses that are successful. So they are also seeing this problem and saying, okay, you know, maybe it's worth it to, to participate in this with our customers. And we will, from what we can see so far, we're going to also benefit from it. So, yeah. Wow. Uh, thank, thanks for that. So, I mean, you really are bringing home the fact that this digital currency is, is actually real money. I mean, with a uh, the U.S. dollar coin is backed by a, a real fiat dollar. Um, and uh, to sort of add to your list, I know PayPal announced that they're going to be PayPal. supporting uh, digital currency also. But I, I want to kind of, uh, this is a different world because you're not, I mean, we, we've all been living in this virtual world for the past year because we've been cooped up <laughs> with, uh, with the uh, pandemic and, and everything. Um, and, you know, every time I, you know, I get on the internet, we're buying more and more online now. And you need to put like your, your credit card number in mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. your your bank uh, number and everything. I'm kind of interested in this this digital name, this umbrella. So mm -hmm. so um, Jermaine, I mean, if I were to uh, first of all, how would someone get a digital name, and is it is it more valuable or than or more secure than like? putting your credit card in all these different websites? Uh, I mean, should I be using digital currency instead of my credit card? Thanks, Kevin. And, uh, you know, I, I like to look at things, and, you know, from several different perspectives, right? Um, mm -hmm. And kind of give you a background. I got into the cryptocurrency space um, you know, back in 2016. Uh, I started reading about blockchain back in 2000 and maybe 14. Uh, it was actually a colleague of mine, Allison Weirich, shout out to her. She, uh, she's an additive manufacturer now, but we used to trade ideas. And, you know, we were always trying to figure out how blockchain technology would affect our industry, aviation, and the importance of having it for some of these companies. 
And this is some years ago, a, a company called uh, ST Aerospace, I believe, out of, or mm -hmm. Technics out of Singapore. Uh, they actually, they, they, they made a blockchain, a blockchain transaction uh, for their supply chain. So, and, and I have to point that, I wanted to paint that story because all of these things are, they're so applicable to what we're doing every day. Um, the importance for a business itself having uh, a digital name from on so many different levels, from a, a branding perspective, but the security aspect. Of it. Um, the reality is, is, again, with the public keys, um, you know, I, I trade with crypto with some friends here and there, and having to do each individual address, it is a little bit, uh, it's, it's cumbersome, right? Like you want to go in and go back and forth. So putting this under uh, the over-the-top digital name, and it could be whatever you want it to be, and having that access and being able to just say, hey, use this dollar sign, uh, whether it's your business and or your, your personal uh, account, it, it, it will speak wonder. Um, fast and easy, um, the security is there because of the blockchain. Uh, and, and I hope I, that was a good uh, <laughs> answer to you. Wow. No, no, thank you. It really was. It's um, sort of a uh, uh, insurance seems like an umbrella over to protect all your all your currencies uh, with this uh, digital name. But uh, getting back to Taylor, I mean, I can appreciate all these large companies, you know, jumping on the digital currency and and, and blockchain and Bitcoin bandwagon, but. A lot of our audience, they're small businesses, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mom and mm -hmm. pop. I mean, mm -hmm. it, uh, it, it's great, but I'm trying to recover from a hard year, right? Uh, as a small business, as a small business owner, uh, should I really care ab about this? You, you talked a bit about inflation, and and uh, I know just recently the government passed yet another stimulus bill. I mean, there are trillions of dollars going into the economy and economists are scared that this is going to really fire up inflation and we're going to see a return of the 70s with, with gas prices going up to five, six dollars a gallon. That's, that mm -hmm. in and of itself is scary. But, but as a small business, it's, uh, is digital currency and digital mm -hmm. names really a, a way to protect myself against that? Yeah, I think no matter who you are, I think the prince the, the, what they call sound money principles mm -hmm. um, that that let's say historically gold has provided is is what we're seeing in Bitcoin. And no matter if you're someone who has an extra hundred dollars to invest, an extra thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousand, whatever it may be, um, they always say diversify, right? And I think that is good advice. And I think that's the advice that a lot of people are receiving and accepting right now and in doing that with Bitcoin because it is the new asset that has been adopted to be the the thing that they, th you know, throw in 1%, 3% of their, maybe more, uh, 5, 10 um, of, of, of their holdings because it, because there is a lot of unknown with, with the amount of money that's being, pumped into not just the U.S. economy, but the entire global economy. There's so much money that's been put in. That's, there's a lot of question marks there. And so um, there, there are also question marks with, with, with Bitcoin and its volatility, of course. But um, there is not a question mark as far as um, who's controlling it um, because it's, it's, it's a distributed, it's based on a distributed blockchain. Um, and mm -hmm. so the price of it is ultimately dictated by what people will pay for it and not um, a centralized government that has other things to benefit from when they solve their problems. Of course, governments have reasons to solve their problems just beyond, uh, unfortunately, um, benefiting their you know constituents. They need to look good, too. And so people are concerned about that, too. And so um, I don't I don't think it matters the size of your business. Uh, it's still going to be something that that can be potentially helpful against that inflation. And as far as the digital names go, I mean, what we, what we like to tell people is it's, it's, if you want to participate in this, um, this successful experiment so far, which is Bitcoin or, or any cryptocurrencies and digital names is going to be the way that you can successfully do it. Because now 
someone knows how to pay you. Just like Jermaine was saying that, that I don't know if you guys have ever done it before, but having to take that long public crypto key and make sure you got every single one, right. That's mm. a scary process. And it's scary for a lot of people because uh, you have to type that in. Right. And so now if there's a way so that someone can look up your business's name, find your key, copy that, and then boom, pay you immediately because they can, they know for sure that's your key. There's no questions about it. They know your key. They can pay you directly. Um, and you can transact in that way that it just creates um, security, peace of mind mm -hmm. and, and security for all players involved. And um, right now there's nothing else that's doing that. And so um, it's, if you want to participate, that's the way to do it. So, yeah. So um, as we uh, open it, I'm going to open it up now for Q and a from the audience and, so as we're getting questions in, I want to sort of follow up with you, Taylor, um, because, I mean, many of, many of the audience may have only heard about Bitcoin. And now, just in this presentation, I've heard Ethereum, there's mm. Tezos, there's Celo. There's like, seems like every day there's a new type of cryptocurrency, you know, mm -hmm. I like the good old days where the only money I had to worry about was a dollar. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, so tell yeah. which yeah. cryptocurrency should I use? I mean, oh, don't, uh, don't forget about Project Vetcoin. Oh, uh, oh Project Vetcoin. <laughs> wow. Oh, I mean, we have our there's own so many. Yeah. Oh, so, so tell yeah. us a little bit about, hold, hold up, Taylor. Tell us a little bit about this Project Vetcoin. And I want Taylor to, to tell us, you know, which <laughs> coin should we use this mm, is scary absolutely uh and so I, and this would be you know being a little facetious there uh, to be clear it's not um you know it doesn't have any value uh, other than point system for our gaming platform uh you know it, with our organization we wanted to be forward thinking in blockchain involved so we had a, a good friend of mine uh, he actually created the project Bitcoin, which in our esports tournaments that we run um, our, our participants can collect points and transfer those into tokens, which are redeemable, uh, you know, through our store on um, shirts and other uh, swag that we actually offer. But um, I, we thought it was a cool concept, you know, having on the blockchain. But we, we, we hope to grow that, right? It's, the more participation we have and, and as this thing grows, uh, we'd like to see more um, involvement because the idea is to get people um, educated, right? When it comes to blockchain technology and how it works, the only way we're going to see, you know, conversion is to have people start using uh, the technologies and, and understanding them and, and also seeing the value. And so that's what we're trying to provide with the Project Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, no, no. And I also understand it really uh, supports uh, uh, um the uh, veterans uh, in, absolutely uh, in uh, getting mental health care, but but back absolutely. to Taylor. Okay, maybe I should get a project Bitcoin. Some of these coins aren't money, right? But they are supporting right. causes that I may care about. Um, yeah. But others relate to money. So, um, you know, which currency should I have, or should I have mm. some of all of them? Uh, mm. Taylor. Yeah, I I I'll, I'll start off by saying do your research. That's number one. Um, <laughs> and before you buy anything, of course, that's the move. I would never tell anyone to blindly buy anything, and um, always look at it first. I think it just depends on what your what your aims are. Um, Bitcoin right now has a market cap of uh, almost it's at uh, nine hundred fifty seven billion as we speak right now, mm -hmm. which is huge. Um, unbelievable, actually. Uh, yeah, but so Bitcoin is right now seen as like that hedge, right? And, and it's probably something that people are going to do a lot more of holding or in the crypto world, hodling, uh, as mm -hmm. a lot of people say. Um, if you're someone who's wanting to be a trader and, and, and you know, you're sick of your, your normal your normal markets and you want to do some more trading, you know, maybe you're going to get into into Cardano or, or Polkadot or um uniswap and, and because you want to do some more <laughs> some more trading on a short-term basis um but but right now the the widespread adoption um in in the in, has been with bitcoin and hence the the confidence in it because there's so much money behind it 
um, and, and not only so much money, but there are so many large players behind it. So um, again, do your research, but um, the, the, the market cap of Bitcoin is, is huge. The next, the number two is, of course, Ethereum, which is at 183 billion, but compared to 957, I mean, it's quite, quite a far cry there. So, and, and from there, it gets um, much, much smaller with each coin. So um, again, and like you said, Kevin, it really does also depends on the, the business that's behind that and, and what they're doing and the developments that they are currently working on. And um, it can be a really fun thing to, to get into, but uh, always good to research first. So it's important to know your business. Um, and uh, at part of that is probably also understanding your, your customers and sort of fielding one of the questions that just came in. And uh, I guess it's to Jermaine, somebody picked up the fact that you were doing esports. So um, how did your audience uh, take to digital currency and doing esports? It was, was it hard? Was it difficult? Did you have to give them this presentation before every game? I mean, <laughs> how, how did that go? And that's, that's actually a really good question, Kevin. Um, and I'm going to be, you know, transparent, right? Honest. It was it was uh, difficult, right? Um, so initially, we were using uh, MetaMask as a wallet application. It's not ideal for beginners because mm-hmm. um, it can be quite uh, complex to understand. And so there's there's some bugs that we're working out on the back end with that, but we were able to get um, you know the coins transferred in. And the, the points out, <laughs> so it's yeah. all a system that we're, we're you know, it's, it's a daily, a, a daily grind. Again, we're not registered with the SEC, so we didn't want to go that route. A lot of red tape there. We just wanted to keep it all more um, internal for our uses with the tournaments. So, yeah, that 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 is that is part of the challenge right now. Uh, mm-hmm. but we're working to improve that. Well, great. Thanks, uh, Jermaine. And and tell is a question that came for you uh, from uh, Brenda B. And is asking, uh, who is creating these coins? Uh, How can you how can you research and and verify that maybe these newer coins are valid? You know, you don't want to put money into a coin Mm -hmm. and then find out it's it's useless. And any Mm -hmm. uh, any words of advice to uh, Brenda and the rest of our audience? Yeah, and I don't want to sound like a uh, you know broken clock, or, you know, but it it um, or that's not the phrase, but whatever it is, <laughs> I don't want to repeat myself. <laughs> um, but uh, research for sure. I mean, a lot of these trading platforms, which is really cool. I use a trading platform called Voyager. There's Coinbase. There's Celsius. There's all sorts of different uh, um, platforms, and a lot of those will actually give you insights as to what those companies are up to. Mm-hmm. Um, and they'll let you know what developments developments they're making. Ultimately, the coin is as valuable as, as people are going to pay for it, um, and that's what it comes down to. Just like any asset, you know, it um, it, it really comes down to what it will be. People will pay for it, um, and, and and just making sure that that company is engaging in sound business practices. They're doing things that you believe in, um, because then they're going to be a successful business. They're going to get uh, their their business in front of more eyes and pe- more people will look to invest with them. So uh, in in their blockchain. So um, yeah, that I think that's that's a good way to put it. Uh, broken record. That was it. No, that was it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Repetition is good, right? You know, yeah. say it once, say it twice, then say it again. No, that's so maybe, that's so maybe a well functioning record player. How about that? <laughs> I like if you like the song. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, Jermaine, I hope you follow the NBA because we have another question here. Somebody, uh, you know, clearly picking up on your esports uh, connection. The NBA is doing NFTs. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, so, uh, what does, yeah, what does this what does this mean? Okay, how how does NFTs relate to the sports world and maybe even the art world? Well. <laughs> So I, I, I was part of the buzz, too. I actually own a couple. I got a couple NBA Top Chef packs myself. <laughs> uh, I, I was in line waiting like everyone else and, uh, you know, through Dapper Labs. 
Um, I, I, I really think it's a lot of fun. Um, however, you know, my personal opinion, I have to, that's the disclaimer, I, I think that, you know, some of that buzz will die over time. Um, the applications around the non-fungible token are far, in my opinion, greater than just these, uh, what we see with NBA and mm-hmm. what will subsequently happen with probably MLB and NFL and all those. But obviously there is a lot of value there, right? I, I, I like to tell this story the way I told my wife, it's like, you know, because she's like, why would you pay for this little short video clip? It's like, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> and I'm like, well, there's a couple of things going on here. It's, you know, it's, it's a non-fungible token, right? So the value is in the fact that the way I see it, is just imagine 200 years from now when things like these are, are, are still available. You know, I, when I was a kid, I used to collect trading cards. And back home in South Carolina, my mom has, well, I, I don't know if she has it anymore, but I have the entire NBA uh, 92 draft class. Wow. Shaquille O'Neal, all those guys. And that Shaquille O'Neal card is worth thousands of dollars in that. I have no idea where that stuff is. Now with this <laughs> stuff being on the blockchain. Um, with your mama. Like this, <laughs> it just, you know, it provides a, a different level of, uh, you know, obviously a value because now, you know, not just the fact that I, I have ownership of this, but right. it can be verified and going back into your, your point about uh, the ownership, Taylor, you know, a lot of these things, you know, from a royalty standpoint, it's, you know, you can resell these things and continue because it's all traces back to that token. So, I mean, there's, 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 there's so many uh, avenues where this is going to be great for a lot of people uh, in the world of, you know, NFTs. Like the players will benefit, the fans as well. And plus it's fun. Okay, that, that, that's great. So um, fun is good, but business is better. So I'm going to go back <laughs> to Taylor because we have a question from uh, a Ken T in our audience. And uh, he's basically saying, can small businesses use digital names to receive peer-to-peer transactions like a cup of coffee? <laughs> can I buy a cup of coffee with, uh, with a digital name? What, you yeah. think you can handle that one? Yeah, I think so. The answer is yes. If, if a business has a digital name um, and you can, you can look up their digital name and what that digital name does is allows you to find what cryptocurrencies or um, even their their PayPal information too that they have on there mm-hmm. uh, that they have that you can pay them at. So you can f- look up their name. Once you type in their name, you search it up, you find them. Now you can just go and find their, their key, their public crypto key, and you can immediately pay them. Um, and you can even, if they have a QR code that they have set up, um, let's say at the register, you can go and scan their QR code, you know, immediately that gives you their public key and then you send them the money. So the answer is absolutely yes. And that's the whole reason why we built digital names was to create an easy to use system for those transactions. Wow. Great. Thanks a lot. looks like we're going into a uh, whole new age here. Yeah. Um, we're, we're quickly running out of time, but, uh, before we, uh, go away, I know everybody is dying to know how, how can they re contact you if they want to find more. So, uh, let's start with Jermaine, where uh, can people, you know, get in touch with you over, over social media or whatever. Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> LinkedIn for sure. And also I, I added my email to this slide, one of my emails, made at tnscorp.io. Okay. Uh, you can reach me there. or And I also have my, my project that email as well. But yeah, reach out to me. Any questions? Um, I'll put it in the chat as well if that helps. Yeah, uh, put it in the chat. Yeah. And uh, great. Thank you. And, and Taylor, I know you've put your uh, email in the chat also. How about social media? Yeah, my, my social media for, uh, well, first of all, we have, you should follow digital names uh, on social media. So you should definitely do that. Go check us out there. there um, yes. So just type in digital names, uh, IO, you'll find us over there. Uh, and me personally, it's just my name, Taylor James Wallace. I'm on there. So you can, uh, 
follow me in my uh, music and motorcycles journey if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> motorcycles. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. All yes, right. Sir. Yeah. Um, yeah. Feel free to reach out with any questions. If, 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 if there's anybody in here who, who just has any questions about anything related to any of these topics, feel free to reach out. Happy to chat at any time. Uh, it would be fun too, frankly. I would love it. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, great. So uh, thank you very much for um, giving us such a wealth of information on uh, this uh, digital currencies and, and blockchain. And I also like to thank our audience. I mean, there were some great questions. Uh, you know, what's really key is that they're still here. You go some webinars and people show up at the very beginning <laughs> and five minutes later, they're gone. We still have a huge number of people still listening and sending in questions and uh, shout out to uh, Lene and Caitlin. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining Thanks. us. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. See you guys. Great time. Thank you so much for that informative presentation. We really enjoyed it. As a reminder, this webinar was recorded and will be available on demand within 24 hours on smallbusinessuniversity.online. Again, I want to extend a very special thank you to our sponsor, AT&T Business. Please remember to frequently check out our webinar schedule on smallbusinessuniversity.online for other great weekly business building webinars. Thank you all for joining us and have a great rest of your day.